I had a viewer request for a specific function and I totally misread it. So this is take two, the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x squared minus one. So the first thing I'm going to do is build a little library. I know that the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to one over x. I know that the derivative of the absolute value of x is x over the absolute value of x. And then this is a super chain rule problem. So I'm going to write down the chain rule. Now the thing is, normally in the textbook, they'll show you the chain rule for a double-decker chain rule, like one function inside another. But here we have, uh, we have x squared minus one, that's a function, and then it's inside the absolute values, and then that's inside the natural log. So we have a triple-decker chain rule problem here. So I'm going to write down a chain rule for a, like, a triple-nested function. So the derivative of f of g of h of x bloop, 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 is equal to, okay, the way it works is for each layer, you work from the outside in, you take the derivative and leave the stuff inside intact, and then you move to the next layer. So we're gonna start on the outside. We need f prime of g of h of x, one, two, three, Okay, we're finished with f, now we're gonna move in a layer to g. g prime of h of x. We're finished with g, so last one is the very interior h. h prime of, oh, I'm out of room, x, squeeze! Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, that is our fabulous library, and that is what we're going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do to take the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x squared minus one is start on the very outside with the natural log. So the natural log's derivative is one over the stuff inside. So I'm going to put one over, this is equal to by the way. Let's see, what's inside? I've got the absolute value of x squared minus one. Bloop. And then I have to move in a layer. So my next function that I'm working with is the absolute value. And the rule for the absolute value function is I take the stuff inside over the absolute value of the stuff inside. So the stuff inside is x squared minus one over the absolute value of, absolute value of x squared minus one, Oop. And then I've got one more layer to deal with. In here, I've got x squared minus one. So I have to take the derivative of x squared minus one which is just 2x. Okay, whew, finished the calculus. Now it's just a matter of pushing numbers around. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to just squash this all into one fabulous fraction. And so I've got 2x times the quantity x squared minus one on top. And on the bottom, I've got the absolute value of x squared minus one squared. Now the thing is, when you square something, it turns positive. So at this point, the absolute value is redundant and we can drop it. So what we've got is 2x times x squared minus one over x squared minus one squared. And now, now is the step that feels a little bit like cheating because since we got rid of that absolute value, now you'll notice that we have an x squared minus one on top and a couple of x squared minus ones on the bottom. So we can cancel out our x squared minus one on top and one of the x squared minus ones on the bottom, leaving us with two x over the quantity x squared minus one. 